Carter, yes, and uh, crews are in the process of trying to remove the tree at this time. Captain, I know it's a busy night for you there, sir, but could you explain the uh, the rationale in closing down access to uh, into the city? Mommy, I'm scared. You do continue to see some pretty good downpour. The area extending mainly along. The Reliance Control's power transfer system for portable generators, a sensible emergency power control panel for your home, lets you control backup power as easily as turning on light switches, takes the worry out of power outages forever to give you great peace of mind. This instructional video is intended to be a supplement to the installation instructions included with your Reliance Transfer switch. Please be sure to read the enclosed instructions in their entirety. Installation of a Reliance Transfer switch is very easy and in most cases will take less than one hour. However, the installer must be somewhat familiar with household wiring and comfortable with removing the cover of your existing electrical panel and working inside of it. If you are at all unsure about performing this installation yourself, it is best to hire a professional electrician. In all cases, we recommend having your work double-checked by an experienced individual. This is the transfer switch most installed by professional electricians for backup power from a portable generator, but you can do it yourself, and I'm going to walk you through a typical installation. Let's begin by looking at some of the tools we'll need for installation. A drill, drill bits, a wire stripper, a wire cutter, Phillips head screwdriver, a straight blade screwdriver, a hammer, a flashlight for working in the dark. We will either need screws if we are mounting to a plywood backing or anchors if we are mounting to block or concrete. There are several different kinds available. We're going to use screw type anchors for this installation. Before we can begin the Reliance Transfer Switch installation, we'll need to decide what household circuits we want to operate during a power outage. But first, let's look at the transfer switch itself. These are the switches that transfer power from the utility to your generator, and these are the circuit breakers that correspond to each switch. The transfer switch circuits that have 15 amp breakers can be installed on any 15 or 20 amp household circuit, but the transfer switches that have 20 amp breakers can only be installed on a 20 amp household circuit. If you have a double pole or 240 volt circuit you would like to operate, like a well pump, it must be on the center or C and D circuits. If you don't need to power a 240 volt circuit, this handle tie can be removed with the two screws and the C and D switches can operate two separate single pole or 120 volt circuits. Your generator will operate most efficiently if you can divide the power used evenly between the two sides of the transfer switch. Think of your generator as having two outputs, one that powers one half of the transfer switch and one that powers the other half. There is a chart in your installation manual that shows the wattage requirements for some typical household devices. When choosing which circuits to operate, try to divide the total wattage evenly between the two sides of the transfer switch. Be sure to refer to your installation manual for more details on load balancing. I'd also like to point out the other transfer switch features, which are the watt meters that measure the power used by the generator and the power inlet where the generator is plugged in. If your transfer switch has a cover over this opening, you'll be installing a remote power inlet box. We'll talk more about that later. After choosing the circuits we're going to power during an outage, 
we need to locate the corresponding circuit breakers and mark them in the main panel. We'll do this before we take the cover off the panel because it would be much more difficult to identify the breakers after the cover is off. I'm going to attach the furnace fan to circuit A, so I'll locate the furnace breaker and mark it with tape. As I look at the load center circuit breaker diagram, I can see that the furnace is on breaker number 7. Now I'll locate breaker number 7 and mark it with the letter A. The next appliance I'd like to power is the refrigerator. In this panel, it's on the kitchen circuit, which is number 9. I've now finished labeling the circuit breakers. We've chosen also to power the sump pump, living room lights, and well pump. Note that the well pump is on a double pole circuit breaker and will be powered by transfer switch circuits C and D. Next step is to remove the cover from the main panel. But first, we want to be sure to turn off the main circuit breaker. This will cut off power to the entire house, and you may need a flashlight from here on. Please be aware that even though this panel is off, there is still live power at the top where the utility power comes in. To mount the transfer switch, we're first going to choose a 3 quarter inch knockout in the bottom of the main panel. I've chosen a knockout close to the center of the bottom to make it easier to bring wires up each side of the panel. I'm first going to pull the wires through the knockout into the panel. Then I can snap the conduit fitting into the knockout opening. Be sure not to overbend the flexible conduit. Now we can mark the holes for mounting the transfer switch. Use appropriate anchors to securely mount the transfer switch. In the main panel, locate the neutral bar. This is where all the white wires are attached. We're going to attach the white wire from the transfer switch to that bar. Attach the white wire to any open position in the neutral bar. The green wire should be attached to the grounding bar in the main panel. In most cases, the grounding bar and the neutral bar are the same. The only exception is if you are installing the transfer switch on a sub-panel. In our case, the grounding bar and the neutral bar are the same, so I'm going to attach the green wire in the same bar as the white wire. Make sure you tighten all screws to the panel manufacturer's specifications. Now we can wire in the individual transfer switch circuits. Each switch on the transfer switch has a corresponding red and black wire in the conduit assembly. These are the wires we'll need to connect the A circuit to the furnace. To wire these into the furnace, we'll first need to turn off the circuit breaker that we labeled A previously. Now remove the existing wire from that breaker. Next, we'll take the red wire labeled A from the transfer switch and cut it to an appropriate length to be inserted into the furnace circuit breaker. Strip that wire about three-eighths of an inch and connect it to the furnace breaker. Finally, we'll take the black wire labeled A from the transfer switch, cut it to an appropriate length, strip it, and use a wire nut to tie it to the wire that we removed from the furnace circuit breaker.
The A circuit is now wired to the furnace through our transfer switch. We can now repeat this procedure for the other 120 volt circuits. Repeating that procedure for the B circuit, we'll turn off the breaker, remove the wire, take the red wire labeled B from the transfer switch, put it in the breaker, Take the black lab wire labeled B from the transfer switch and attach it to the wire that we removed from the breaker with a wire nut. Because our 240 volt well pump is on a double pole circuit breaker, we'll need both the C and D circuits from the transfer switch. Installation is the same as the 120 volt single pole circuits, except that we'll connect the C wires to one half of the double pole breaker and the D wires to the other half. Turn off the breaker, remove the wire, take the red wire labeled C and put it in one half of the breaker. Take the black wire labeled C and tie it to the wire that was in that side of the breaker. Take the red wire labeled D Take the black wire labeled D and tie it to the wire that we removed. Tuck the wires in a little bit and now we're done with the wiring. This is what your completed transfer switch wiring will look like. The only thing left is to put the cover back on the panel and turn the circuit breakers back on. It's always a good idea to double check your wiring before you attach the cover. With the cover back on, we can turn the main breaker back on and the individual circuits we turned off during installation. There is a label on the top of the transfer switch that allows us to make a record of what the switches control.